So this is a regular F50 system. It is a system that is considered standard in terms of its specifications and features. The principle of its assembly. Vertical elements are typically referred to as posts in the construction industry. The horizontal components that form the roof structure are referred to as rafters. Posts and bars, they both have a visible width of 50 millimeters. The only difference between them is their depth, which varies. The designer determines the size of the rack to be used based on the wind loads that need to be considered during the selection process. I would not like to delve too deeply into technical details. Glazing is done from the outside. So this is the main thing probably that you need to pay attention to when you decide whether to make it from a window profile or from a facade. Facade profile is utilized on large dimensions in expansive openings where large size filling is employed. Because it is provided from the exterior using manipulators with the assistance of suction cups and a framework of racks, rails is put together and subsequently this framework is installed by the filling manipulator. If this is done from a window profile, the filling is installed from the inside under the glazing bead, so it will be a big problem to bring the filling there. Following that, this filling is secured using a clamping plate. No painting is done on it. She is fixed to the rack with screws. There is also a term insertion present. Here it is. Plastic material, which is not susceptible to freezing is securely attached to the rack using screws. The pressure plate applies pressure to the double glazed window. The decorative cover is then placed on the clamping plate. The cover is painted as per the row. In the same way as the blind filling, the windows and doors that can be opened are also seamlessly integrated into the facade. They are simply pressed in place, just like a window that has double glazing for insulation and soundproofing. This is what the classic facade looks like in reality. Rack and pinion mechanism. That is to say, each and every element has a uniform thickness of 50 millimeters throughout, ensuring consistency in their dimensions. Semi-structural facade. Regular facade, semi-structural facade, structural facade are present. We'll touch on it briefly. What's the difference between a semi-structural facade and a regular facade? It differs solely in external elements. That is, the internal elements, racks and crossbars, all of them remain unchanged. The same double glazed window differs only by these clamping plates. If in that case we had a clamping plate on top of which a decorative cover was put on. And all of this would have a certain thickness, approximately 20 millimeters. Then in this particular case, a special small skirting board is used which is not 50 millimeters in size, but rather 38 millimeters in visible width. And it is extremely thin, meaning that this thickness is very small and slender. And it appears more aesthetically pleasing on the front of the building than it does with clamping strips and covers that are 20 millimeters in thickness. This is known as a semi-structural facade. A structural facade is a type of facade that lacks any external fastening elements for double glazed windows, providing a seamless and unobstructed appearance. How do double glazed windows stay in place in this particular case? Firstly, similar to the semi-structured and regular, all internal elements remain unchanged and unaffected. These are racks, bars that are attached to the opening, and external elements in the surrounding area. Within the double glazed unit, an aluminum profile in the shape of a P is installed on the inside. This P-shaped profile is installed there during the manufacturing process of the double glazed unit. He adheres to the glass, then it's all covered with butyl tape. It's not visible, only visible from the front. And then the double glazed window was carefully pressed against the rack using a special aluminum insert for a secure fit. That is, it enters this P-shaped profile and then is screwed to the rack with a self-tapping screw. It transpires that the double glazed window is affixed to the conclusion. He is firmly pressed up against the countertop surface. Next here, or the second double glazed window is the same depth or some kind of opening element. 
The connections are sealed using a special sealant, ensuring a tight and secure bond between them. It is also known as doconing. It is a type of sealant used for structural applications. The visible width of these strips is 20 millimeters. There will be 20 millimeters of sealant between the double glazed windows and there will be no fluctuations, so it will be one plane. All installed double glazed windows, then sealed with sealant, and this is a kind of solid facade. Here are the opening elements. I will briefly discuss them now, and they can also be implemented in a structural manner. The difference between a regular opening element inside the facade and a structural one is that in a structural one, the outer glass is made larger, which is commonly referred to as a tooth insulated glass with a tooth, therefore the outer glass is bigger and it encompasses all of these frames, sash, hardware and all of these elements. The interior units cannot be seen from outside the facade. This is the reason why they are considered as a structural component. It appears like this, that is all things are in thin lines, solid wall, here is another example of a structural facade and a structural leaf. Visually from the street, you can hardly distinguish this sash. In terms of the exterior glass, it is made larger in size, but it is also painted black along the perimeter to match the thickness of the aluminum material, providing a sleek and cohesive look to the overall design. Painting is currently in progress, and accordingly, in order to prevent the aluminum profile from being visible through the glass, this double glazed unit is affixed into the sash with a special adhesive and from the outside it transpires. This sash is virtually imperceptible until it is opened. The most recent development in facades which has been introduced to the market is the modular facade which is considered the most intricate. There is a system Alutec EV65. This facade system is only used in some individual cases for instance, in the case of a high-rise building with a considerable height, it becomes impractical to install scaffolding or work from swings due to the inconvenience caused by the excessive height and the presence of strong winds. For instance, the building is situated within the city, surrounded by other buildings, and there is no possibility to install construction forests due to space limitations and regulations in the urban area. In this instance, an element facade is utilized. What is the primary characteristic of the element facade? In that these elements, it is composed of blocks. They are put together at the production site uh, along with the double glazed unit. So such squares are made, a double glazed window is installed, all external elements are installed. And this is a large element that is brought to the object. And on the object, it is connected together with the assistance of a crane. So. There are special brackets there which are also attached at the production site. Special brackets are also installed on the monolithic building's floor slabs. They lift and install with a crane. I'll show you further now. This is the same semi-structural element facade. It can be both in regular execution and in structural, also structural elements. Uh, the installation appears like this. Therefore, they use a crane to lift this large square and connect it together. Uh, the points where the bracket is mounted are already pre-filled in this location prior to the current stage of the process. Moscow City has been glazed like this with the help of an element facade. And in general, high-rise buildings, skyscrapers, are not made from an ordinary facade. They are made only from this and also 